Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger. My friends, today is a very special episode here on the Rufalmonger channel as we're talking about a character that I feel has been much maligned over the years and to me unfairly so. And that is E Honda of Street Fighter. Honda is one of the most important characters of one of the most important franchises of gaming history, and yet he gets very little respect. It all started a little bit ago when I did a little bit of a character interest tier list in Street Fighter VI, and for myself, I'm very interested in trying Honda in Street Fighter VI, and going by a lot of the other interest tier lists other people made after the fact, not so many other people are. So the purpose of this video is to basically show you why E-Honda is a cool character, both in terms of game, his flavor, his lore, how he once saved the earth itself, and a bunch of other things in between. So let's dig into it. Although first, a word from our sponsor, Street Fighter Duel. Fan of Street Fighter? Well, if you're on this channel, there's probably a very good chance of that. So why not try Street Fighter Duel? Street Fighter Duel is the official Street Fighter mobile game with a roster of over 40 classic playable characters from the Street Fighter franchise. You can build and upgrade your own personal team of world warriors and you can take them into battle in various single player modes or gather your friends and play cooperatively or competitively. Experience the world of Street Fighter with your created team taking on a bunch of familiar faces in a bunch of familiar locales. And of course, power up your characters through various upgrades and promotions. Street Fighter Duel is already jam-packed full of content, but expect many more updates to come in the future as well, including more missions, more rewards, more Street Fighters themselves, and maybe even a collaboration or two. You can play Street Fighter Duel on your smartphone of choice. It is live right now. So why not try out Street Fighter Duel? So let's talk Honda. What is Honda all about? I think first and foremost, very obviously, he is indeed a sumo wrestler. I think that's pretty clear. And his mission since day one, since his debut in Street Fighter 2 back in 1991, is basically to do two things. One, to spread Japanese culture. And I think since 1991, Japanese culture has spread pretty good, so mission success on that, and to spread the love and the art of sumo wrestling. And you know what? I think, honestly, that's been a success to a degree as well. Maybe not as popular as like anime and other Japanese culture to be sure, but these days you can find English language coverage on sumo on Twitch on channels like Midnight Sumo. So as far as his stated goals go, Honda kind of a success story out of the gate, I would say. Now on to Honda himself. So in the terms of the biz, Honda is what we would call a big boy. Now he's not as tall as some of the other characters like Zangief, T-Hawk, Hugo, but he almost weighs as much as them in a smaller frame. Going by the Street Fighter 6 stats, he comes in at a slim 300 plus pounds. And part of what makes Honda fun from a gameplay perspective is he knows how to throw that weight around. And talking about that, let's talk about some of the moves that Honda is traditionally known for in the Street Fighter franchise. So of course we gotta start with the slaps. This is the signature move if any move is, and it's a big part of the reason why Honda is popular with a lot of the old timers like myself. From personal experience when I was a kid back in 91, I couldn't do things like uppercuts and fireballs. Those motions were too dang hard. But what I sure could do is hit the punch buttons as fast and as hard as I possibly could, because this is what we call a mash motion. Just enter a bunch of inputs and you get this special move off. Honda has the fastest hands in the West and in the blink of an eye, he'll hit you so many times you can't count them all straight. Another core move for Honda is the sumo headbutt. He flings himself at you from across the screen and well, all that mass hitting you all at once, it's not a pleasant time for the opponent. Usually also his super, although it's usually mixed with the 100 hand slaps because the headbutt and hand slaps, those are the two key moves of Honda. So you show them off together in grand fashion. Fun fact, the headbutt, that's true flight. Don't believe me? I bet you don't. Well, Street Fighter 6 says you're wrong. Here we can see Honda's restaurant in Street Fighter 6. This is in the world tour mode. And what do I spy with my little eye? Why, it's this sumo wrestler in the sky. 
And at the risk of rhyming too much, yo, he's flying up in the sky. Because in the world of Street Fighter, the sumo headbutt is not only suitable for attacking your opponents, it's also suitable for international travel. A proper practitioner of sumo can take to the sky like Superman can, and also can go into orbit itself, as we'll talk about later in the video. So yeah, sumo headbutt, pretty good move. And speaking of pretty good move, how about another signature? The Honda Butt Slam. Not since Super Mario and Mario 64 has a butt slam been so devastating in a video game. In Street Fighter 4 and 5 especially, uh, it's a bit of the online special if you will, as it can be difficult to block as a cross up and it'll make you feel pretty bad if you get hit by it a few times in a row. And keeping with a rear end base offense that would make Armika jealous, Honda is a bit of a master of it, let's put it that way. Since the 90s, he's been taking his rump and slamming people down to the ground with it. So the Oicho Nage, the Oicho Throw, comes in a lot of different versions, and it makes Honda basically a light version of a grappler. This grab is perhaps not as fierce as the spinning pile driver, but you absolutely have to keep it in mind because Honda is pretty proficient at grabbing you. So that's some of the basics. That's kind of what makes Honda Honda. But what about some of the more choice advanced things over the years? Some key pieces of fun tech. Let's go through a few examples. So the hundred hand slap, as we went over uh, earlier in the video, you know, you just mash punches and you get it. And if you mash the same punch or at some point, you'll get an EX version as you saw right there. The thing is, there is a very, very, very exact science to all this. Despite his somewhat simplistic appearance gameplay wise, Honda execution wise is one of the most technical characters in Street Fighter history and the 100 hand slap has to do a lot with it. You see the 100 hand slap mash is not actually a mash. You need exactly five inputs of punch to get the 100 hand slap. Now you can put in more buttons, hence the mash. You can just go to town on the button, right? But you can't have less than five inputs. Less than five inputs, nothing comes out. And it all has to be in a very short amount of time. So I wanna introduce you to something like Crouch Medium Kick and Furious 100 Hand Slap. On paper, it's absolutely nothing special. Like Crouch Medium Kick in this special move is like almost the most basic building block of Street Fighter. But this specifically is one of the single hardest things you can do in Street Fighter 4 because you need to cancel that crouch medium kick and 100 hand slap, and you need five separate and distinct inputs of punch, ending specifically on heavy punch, and in a terrifically small amount of time, or you get exactly nothing. You can try and slop your way through it a bit and mash, but one, even when you mash, you might not be fast enough, and two, you might get EX hands instead, you might get medium or light hands, you just might not get the heavy 100 hand slap which you want, because that is, well, frankly, the entire point. So let me show you what you actually need to do to get something that is seemingly so basic. So here we are on my arcade stick, and what you need to do is medium kick, and then very quickly as a plank motion, go into medium punch, heavy punch, and then slide across light, medium, heavy punch, getting exactly five inputs of punch in. Here it is in real time. So you have to have six separate and distinct inputs with no overlap or mashing or any kind of inaccuracy in about 17 frames. So less than a third of a second. And suffice it to say for crouch medium kick in this special move, that's pretty dang hard, y'all. Back in the Street Fighter 4 days, it took me a very, very, very long time to be able to be fast and accurate enough to do things like this. And this is just one example of many where Honda can do XYZ into 100 hand slap. It's a level of technical skill and speed demanded of you that, you know, other characters really don't got to worry about. Now, thankfully, over time, things got exponentially easier as the old five input minimum became four inputs instead. It's only one less, yes, but, well, one less just makes things a lot easier. You still need to be accurate, like uh, crouching light punch goes into light hands, so you need to end that fourth input on light specifically. But now, since it's four inputs instead of five, whatever you want a piano into, that's the term piano motion, it just becomes a lot easier. 
So point of respect for Honda players, Honda has to work a lot harder for basic stuff than most other members of the cast in Street Fighter. Now switching gears, let's go to old Forbidden Tech, where Honda has to work way less hard than other characters to get very effective offense. And that's the old Street Fighter 2 Oicho glitch. This has to work with how the game reads inputs and also just some general messiness with Honda. Now here you see me hitting punch, I'm just gonna hold the button and the punch doesn't matter, just that it is a punch. And then inputting forward, down forward, down, down back, and then holding it for a bit and then letting go of the punch. And I get the Oicho Nage throw. So going back to real time speed here. So I walk forward and I input the motion again, forward, down, forward, down, down, back, and I'm just holding it. That's it. And then I let go a punch. So as you can tell, the amount of time that goes by for me inputting that motion and holding down back to when the actual throw happens, it literally can be infinite. As long as you keep holding down back, the motion for the Oicho throw will stay stored. And since I'm using negative edge, I'm holding a button, then letting go instead of just pressing the button itself. That means I have a grab that can come out at any point I choose while I'm holding down back and blocking. I don't have to stop blocking, I don't have to move, I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. And doing it this way, by the way, there's no whiff animation. So it's basically free grabs forever, no consequence on whiff. Very strong. Now Street Fighter 2 Turbo is a game full of all sorts of crazy bugs and glitches. Uh, this isn't even top of the mountain necessarily, but it's a very, very strong technique to say the least that would never be allowed today. And then Honda has like the super edge case tech, the super niche tech. So the sumo stomp, down forward, heavy kick, Street Fighter V, it's plus enough on hitting get small combos, plus on block two, that's handy. And one of the interesting things about it in the Street Fighter V, Street Fighter IV, is you can cancel the startup of it into different special moves, like say the grab, or say the butt stomp. So yeah, you got some stuff with it, but there's also some secret slimming techniques to it as well, where Honda can make himself smaller thanks to the stomp. So say you're up against a barrage of plus frames. The enemy just has all sorts of plus frames. And at any point you try to hit a button, you're going to get counter hit. That's no good. In a situation like this, what's a sumo to do? Well, in certain situations against certain moves, you can call your shot and use your sumo stomp to shrink your hurt box and make moves completely whiff. And here's an example. So we saw earlier if Honda tried to jab out, he get hit because Poison was already pretty plus, but here he can use a stomp. It pulls back his hurt box and he makes the move miss. He's not hitting her back, but you know what? Baby steps. At least he avoided the move, right? That's something, but you have other options in this situation. Remember the sumo stomp is cancelable into other moves. So now take that stomp and boom, turn it into EX butt stomp. And you made the move whiff originally, but now it's a full on punish. So yes, once again, admittedly, this is a very small piece of tech, right? But these are some of the very interesting things Honda can do over the various games over all the years. Honda is a fun character with fun tech. Now, that all said, a lot of the gameplay stuff, let's talk some of the story stuff with Honda. So in Street Fighter as a whole, honestly, there's very few canonical things in Street Fighter, very few fixed points in time that we definitely know happened for sure. Like Ryu definitely beat Sagat and won the first World Warrior Tournament, Street Fighter 1. Alex definitely beat Gil in Street Fighter 3. And kind of everything else is up in the air. Like we don't even know who won Street Fighter 2. Like, you know, the single most important game in the history of the genre, we got no idea. So what I present to you here is a bit of a Honda timeline of events. We are gonna enter the Hondaverse, where every major thing that could have happened in Street Fighter, that wasn't Ryu winning Street Fighter 1 or Alex in Street Fighter 3, well, that was Honda, cause why not? Literally just as likely as anything else. So going to Street Fighter Alpha, right after the Street Fighter 1 World Warrior Tournament, Honda starts traveling the world looking for worthy foes, looking to spread the culture of Japan and to spread the good word of the combat sport of sumo. And it's hard, because in his own words, sumo wrestling is big, but the world is much, much, much bigger. Profound stuff, really. Now, given that we are in the Hondaverse, Honda meets up with Ryu, the winner of the first World Warrior Tournament, and beats his head in, because why not? 
the two have a good natured fight and basically they respect each other as warriors. No hard feelings, basically they both made each other better. That works out. That's good and positive and nice. I like it. Honda goes on to fight multiple other opponents and somewhere during this in the alpha timeline specifically, he learns as person of justice that someone's selling drugs and guns. And while that's just not good, you shouldn't be selling those kind of things. Who would do that? And unfortunately for Honda, there's a character called M. Bison, and Bison, he's a nasty dude. He will sell drugs and guns to people. Eventually, Honda will find the Shadaloo base and happens to run into Zangief, who is also a person of justice and wants to stop Bison and Shadaloo. So they have a bit of idea here. Why not just tear this base up by themselves? As fortune would have it, by the way, the base is powering up super cycle power death lasers that are used by satellites and have giant Thailand robots shooting stuff into them. The Shadaloo game plan in the Alpha series is actually very advanced. It's basically Bison's best attempt. In later games, he doesn't have toys to work with anywhere on this level. So they see that the cycle power reactors spinning up. What do we gotta do? We gotta wreck this base, right? So logically, Honda, Zangief, there's only one thing to do. Zangief is gonna spinning pile drive Honda into everything in the base and destroy everything. Zangief is very strong. Honda is very dense and therefore it is effectively the perfect weapon. So now Shadaloo's psycho drive is destroyed. Oh, and by the way, an unbreakable bond between Japan and the Soviet Union has been formed. So now without the psycho drive, Bison is much weaker than before and Honda takes him to the battlefield. Honda actually does not know who he is at all. He just randomly fights him and has no idea of the connection of Bison and the Shadowloo base and the Psycho Drive and all that stuff. It's all just a coincidence. Bison goes for the final blow, a massive Psycho Crusher, which Honda just meets with a sumo headbutt. And uh, the sumo headbutt, as we went over, power of flight, very destructive, it hits and it explodes Bison. Bison the demigod goes up in flames, literally against the power of a sumo headbutt. Honda destroys Shadaloo without even knowing that he beat him. And of course, there's still personnel left, like say the Shadaloo Bison dolls. And so Julie and Juni, naturally, what has to come next? Well, Honda takes them up and turns them into his sumo students, which fair enough, I guess. The Bison Dolls are now honorable sumo wrestlers. And as you can see here, we even have some official Capcom art to immortalize the whole situation. We got Julie and Juni mastering some Honda hand slaps. Now, keeping with the Honda Versa Madness, we move on to Street Fighter 2. And he enters the tournament to spread the word of sumo and finds Bison again and beats him again. Significantly weaker, you would assume, anyways, from Street Fighter Alpha. And effectively, Honda's main concern at this point is, hey, sumo rocks. Honda out to basically get as many converts to sumo as possible, and also just really, really, really digging that Chonko Nabe. You know, you probably inferred it because Honda's kind of a big dude, but the boy is here to eat. Some of his students are shocked to see how much he can put away. Others seemingly spiteful and jealous. Like, I got no idea what this sideways look is that these guys are making at each other, but it's, uh, Reed's is like devious and sinister to me. And again, thanks to some official art here, basically it's all about training and eating and friendship and fun. Honda's not self-serious, he's just here to have a good time. Now, as for Street Fighter 3, well, Honda wasn't feeling it, so Street Fighter 4. So Street Fighter 4, which is canonically after Street Fighter 2, Honda, well, he's just kind of back on his old mess here. He wants to tell the world about sumo and his compatriots are trying to get him to not leave Japan, just stay at home. And he's like, nah, I got to travel worldwide and do my thing. And well, he does his thing and he spreads the word of sumo yet again, tries to make it an Olympic sport. As you see here in the official art, he's got the gold medal now in sumo. And basically it's good times all around. Honda mania is running wild. Come Street Fighter V, we enter Honda the businessman. This is uh, where he's becoming a proprietor of many bathhouses across the world. And he does not like how people use the bathhouse. And he effectively criminally assaults them. 
in the business establishment to make sure that they enjoy the bathhouse in only the way he deems correct. Now, thankfully, everyone seemingly takes it in good stride. But he definitely puts everyone in their place. There is only one right way to use the bathhouse. So basically, all fun and games. We're having a grand old time here, right? But my friends, that's about to end. The time for silliness is now over. I don't know if you saw it on the news today, but there's a meteor coming. It's the same kind of meteor that killed the dinosaurs. All life on Earth will end. This is an extinction level event. I suggest you spend your last moments with your friends and family. Just think good thoughts. But when you have a friend like Hakan, it turns out anything is possible. So Hakan, with his oil, doing basically his Ultra One and spinning Honda around and around and around, gaining speed, gaining speed, gaining speed, and with Honda's critical mass, like literally, not a fat joke, just a lot of mass, we will rocket Honda doing an Omega level sumo headbutt at that planet killer asteroid. Honda's head so strong it broke the psycho drive, his headbutt killed M. Bison, and god damn it, this headbutt's gonna save planet Earth. And he did it. Honda destroyed the asteroid. His sumo headbutt saved planet Earth. But what of young Edmund Honda? He's fine, bruised a couple ribs maybe, but it takes more than a planet killing asteroid to put E Honda down. And my friends, this is why E Honda is such a cool friggin' character. Is Laura gonna do this? No. Is Alex gonna do this? No. Everyone loves Cammy and Jerry these days. Are they gonna do something like this? No, they're not. You can only rely on E Honda for matters like this. And yes, this is his official Street Fighter V arcade ending, by the way. And thanks to this great moment, Hakan and Honda, the bonds between Japan and Turkey have never been better. So my friends, I hope this has educated you on Honda from what he's about, his gameplay, his Laura story, and all points in between. Honda is actually a really cool and fun character. And just about everyone who says, oh, I don't like Honda, he's boring, this, that, and the other, it's because they don't know. They don't know what the boy is all about. So hopefully this video has educated you on Edmund Honda and his greatness. He is a cool friggin' character and deserves a lot more love, respect, and admiration than he currently gets. So the next time you're on Twitter and you see someone complaining how they wish Sean was in the game instead of Honda for Street Fighter VI, you go to them and you let them know what's up. That all said, we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching, hope this video has found you well, and go out and play some Street Fighter.